So don't leave too soon. topic today is to seek God. Isaiah chapter 42 verse 13 doesn't say anything about seeking God. I don't think. Let me look right quick. Isaiah 43 13. Yeah, that scripture says nothing about seeking God, but that's all right. Mom, if you stop pinching that baby, <laughs> and they're fine, not going to bother me. Charles Spurgeon said that uh, if you are not seeking the Lord, the devil is seeking you. If you are not seeking the Lord, judgment is at your heels. It says judgment, I signed punishment. Uh, yeah, that, that's a good enough sign language. So you got that? I should just be able to say church is over, it's done. And because you've read this, that's pretty powerful. If you are not seeking the Lord, am I too loud? Yeah. No? Okay. Yes and no. If you're not seeking the Lord, then the devil is seeking you. Therefore, you and I need to be seeking God. Hosea chapter 10 verse 12 says, Sow to yourselves in righteousness and you'll reap mercy. Break up the fallow ground because it is time to seek the Lord until he come and reign righteousness upon you and I. You understand, people, we try to be righteous. I try to be holy. I try to be uh, the perfect man of God. And my wife will tell you, that sometimes... And I'll tell you, when God's getting ready to pour it out, the biggest, we get uh, short uh, fuse. It's about that long. She says something and it, Hoo-ah! no, I mean, I mean, she says something and I go, oh, wonderful. Because Satan tries to destroy. When we start seeking God uh, for righteousness, Satan tries to block it. Another scripture, Isaiah 31.1. We're in the right book now. Isaiah 31.1. Woe, woe to you that go down to Egypt for help and stay on 
uh, horses and trust in chariots because they're many and, and because they are very strong. But, the last part of this verse says, but they do not look to the Holy One of Israel and they do not seek the Lord. We put our trust in everything uh, except the right things sometimes. We need to begin to seek the Lord. Talking about seeking the Lord and, and a passion for the Lord. Uh, as Christians and followers of Jesus Christ, uh, we are called, you are responsible to seek the Lord. To run, Paul says. Run. He says, press to the mark. David, come up here. Jose is working today and he's not here, my, my assistant. You have to take place of Jose. It says to uh, press toward the mark. And when something gets in your way, like he's in my way, you knock him out of the way and go on. Oh, well, that's not nice. Get out of my way. Well, he's a person, yeah. But what I'm talking about is your circumstances, your sit situation in your life, the things that are happening around you. Oh, <laughs> I broke my fingernail. You know, whatever your situation is, push it out of the way and move on to get close to God. Mm. To become more like Jesus and experience the greater things that he wants to pour out in your spirit, you have to uh, go get it. Yeah. You have to go get it. And I see people in this church going to get it. Tuesday night, I see Joey at this altar praying. I see Lorena at this altar praying. I see people bowing in their pews, seeking God. They're going to get what God has to offer. And they're not allowing Depression, they're not allowing frustrations to block them. I could have easily just showed up this morning and said, you know, hey, I just don't feel like preaching today. Who's going to preach? Come on. Marissa, come on. Uh, she's getting ready. She's thinking about it. She's getting a message ready for you to preach talked with her yesterday about that so she's getting ready we have to become a church of go get it devotion time requires uh, discipline we've not been very uh, oh Okay, we're, we're not too successful with devotions together. Now, devotion time, she's over here in this church every morning praying. But we, we started reading this book, 
It's called uh, Making Lightning. And uh, it's, it's kind of uh, changed my life in four days. Mm. Devotion requires discipline. It requires labor. It requires effort. And it requires resolve. Resolve. Oh, that's that thing you spray on the floor and clean it. Resolve. It requires uh, resolve is no matter what happens, it's not going to stop me. If my car breaks down, I'm still coming to church. If my car has a flat tire, I'm still coming to prayer meeting on Tuesday night. I'm still doing what God wants me to do. If my alarm clock doesn't ring on Sunday morning and I oversleep, oh, it's 10 minutes to church time, I'm still going to get up and go to church. Hey, that is resolve. That is making the decision that no matter what, well, last night I was sick all night long, but this morning I'm pretty well, I'm still going to church. It's resolve. Making the decision, no matter what. Isaiah 42, 13 says, The Lord marches out like a warrior. He prepares himself for battle like a soldier. He shouts, gives the battle cry, and then overpowers his enemy. I want to become like the Lord. Now, I, I used, I, I want to be a fighter. But I'll tell you something. I can't even make a fist. See them fingers? I can't get that fist anymore. My age, my arthritis, yeah. I know, you young people are not that way. You can make a fist. Make sure your fist is for God and not for your brothers and your sisters. I want to be a fighter for the Lord, doing what He wants. Some say, well, I'm, I'm a lover not a fighter. Well, I guarantee you, I am a lover, not a fighter. Okay, all right. Let's 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 take Marissa. She, I, I know her and her and Joey. They oh well, Marissa's a fighter. Joey is the lover. That's for sure. Joey, but if somebody tried to do something to their children, Joey would become a fighter real quick. Yeah, real quick. When we love the presence of God like we love our children, and my, my children are old, but if they something happened and I would still love them and I would fight for them. I would fight for my children. I need to be fighting for the presence and the glory of God. You know, it's like, it's like this. When I, I you see, uh, if, if you see, uh, uh, Mabel over there 
texting during church. You need to become a fighter and go over. This is church. We're here to worship the Lord. And then we look at, oh, she was typing the scriptures down. Oh. Yeah, we do all kinds of things in church instead of worshiping the Lord. Yeah, we do. Uh, I, I won't even go there, what I'm thinking. I don't want distractions. Any, I, don't, I don't want things to block me from the presence of God. Okay, so next Sunday when you come into this house and it's time to start, or getting close, five minutes, you see the countdown going down, five minutes to church time, and uh, what do you do? You get up, you go to the restroom, you get your drink of water, and you come back in because this is an awesome movie. And you don't want to miss one part of that movie. Oh, well, some, some movies are boring. Okay. Well. We'll not go there. Matthew eleven twelve 12 says, From this time, John the baptizer until now, the kingdom of heaven has been uh, forcefully advancing and forceful people have been seizing the kingdom of God. Are we seizing the kingdom of God? What part of the kingdom of God do you have? That you can show to other people. I want a generation like, uh, like Jacob. You know the story about Jacob? He wrestled and refused to let go. Isn't that Jacob? Just check and see if that was the right story. He wrestled with God. And refused to let go until he received from him. We stand and we pray, Lord, we have a family in need. You bless them. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And we're serious. But I need to go up to the family and ask them, did you receive? Nothing yet. Then I need to get back to wrestling with the Lord again. This is what Jesus is saying. Jesus says, hey, church, uh, do you have a mirror? How many of you have a mirror? Two? Oh, all women do. I mean here, with you. There's one, two, three. Yeah, women do. Hey, guys, where's my phone? You have, oh, uh, some of you have the old uh, cell phones that, flip out, and it has the dial on it. But the others of us that have the new technology phones, it has a camera, and I can... Selfies! I saw some selfies on Facebook this morning. Oh, you're guilty. You do that. Jesus is telling you, hey, you need to look at that selfie picture. Look at it. And see if you're in that group with John the Baptist that is grabbing hold of things. He's pressing in. He's pushing aside and moving toward the presence of God. But then there's the other group who will not respond to anything. Ah. Matthew eleven sixteen 16 says, 
G Jesus is talking. He says, how can I describe the people who are living right now? Oh, they are like children who sit in the marketplace and shout out to other children. We played music for you, but you didn't dance. I just listened to three songs. I did not see anyone dancing. Just saying. We, we played a funeral song and you weren't even sad. This is Jesus talking to the two groups. The ones, one group who is pressing in for the kingdom of God and the other group who, hey. The one group is taking it by force. I don't care if I have a water leak out back that needs fixed tomorrow. I'm going to take my time to get in the presence of God tomorrow morning. Well, it's wasting water. It's a big water leak. There's a hole in the ground in the back of the church right here. It's deep. It's about, it's about, it's about yay deep. And there's water in the bottom of it. Therefore, I know it's a water leak in a pipe. That pipe is put in in 1953 or somewhere around there, 57. It's old, needs replaced. But understand, I'm, I'm, I want to be in that group who takes the kingdom by force. I'm going to put that aside for a couple of hours and I'm going to get my attention with God tomorrow morning before I start to work back there. <clears throat> Jesus is saying there's this other group who is slumbering uh, and just passive. Uh, this group will not pray at the altar. This group will not dance when the songs are played. This group will not give themselves to worshiping God. This group talked about John the Baptist in Matthew eleven eighteen. John came neither eating or drinking. And the people say, hey, there's a demon in him. And then you know what they said about Jesus? Now understand, they said, oh, John, he comes, he doesn't drink and he doesn't eat like us. And, oh, there's a demon in him. And then Jesus shows up and it says in 19, says, the son of man came eating and drinking and the people say, look at him. There's a demon in him. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to change. Jesus sees that reluctant group that that just pushes him aside and Jesus also sees those who respond and are motivated and are digging and clawing deeper. Jesus used the word violent. In Matthew eleven twelve, it says, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. I, this, this is a, complex scripture to me it just it says I need to become 
violent? Yeah? No? Yeah? 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 Okay, well. Ralph, after church, go out there on the street and start hitting people. <laughs> no, it doesn't mean that. Overcoming evil with good. Yeah. Well, let's look at the other word. Jesus said, suffereth. And Jesus said, suffereth, uh, Jesus, the little children to come to me in another scripture. That word suffer means to permit. It means to permit. Now in the verse we just read there, it said, suffereth violence. Permit. It means permit the people to push aside and focus on him. Jesus is saying, you are permitted to have the things of God. Luke wrote about it in Luke 16, 16. It says, the law and the prophets were until John. <clears throat> Most people thought they were until Jesus. But anyway. Uh, Since that time, the kingdom of God is preached, and every man presses into the kingdom of God. I wish I could say that every one of us press into the kingdom of God. Luke, said, Luke says in this scripture that every person uh, storms. You know, I, I, I use, you know, how long have we been married? Oh, 45 Forty-five years ago, I might have opened the door and stormed into the house. You left the lights on the car. Well, that's a storm. But here, Luke is saying to us, we need every person to storm into the kingdom of God. Oh. People, you do not just uh, wander up into the presence of God. You don't just... Uh, Wander into the presence of God. You have to storm into the presence of God. The kingdom opens to those who are hungry and eager for Him. Let me give you another picture of the uh, violent and the passive. Uh, Blake, take that picture off the wall and run it up here. Pick it up, straight up, lift out. Come on. Yeah, that's the right one. Thank you. You can go back to your job. Alright. You know about <laughs> Hum. You, whoa! You know about this story? Okay, that's all I want. I just thank you for your help. This woman, she was ill. And there was a crowd of people around Jesus. 
she said, if I can just touch his clothes, I'll become whole. This woman pushed through that crowd of people and touched Jesus. And Jesus said, whoa, wait, 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 wait. Who touched me? And the disciples, <laughs> get a clue, man. Who touched me? Look at all these people. You, and who touched me? And Jesus said, yeah. I sent something go out of me. There was a host of other people who were passive, just, you know, they just come to church because that's the right thing to do. How many of you showed up to church because that's, that's the right thing to do this morning? Oh, my. I'm in the wrong church. Not one. <laughs> that question could go both ways. And you knew that. Yeah, the passive is just showing up for church and, oh, I enjoy the worship team. Hey, those ladies sign pretty good. I don't know what that other one does over here. She doesn't sign. She just... But uh, that's all right. I, I said, you don't have to learn sign language in this church, okay? But for the deaf, they, they like that one. They're just here. And then there's the other group who participates. This woman who participated in what Jesus was offering. She pushed through and touched him. Blake, next. There is the casual and the calculated. The casual is, well, you know, I'm going to church today. But then the other group, the calculated group, I'm going to church today today and I'm going to receive my healing from God. I'm going to church today and I'm going to get a touch of His Spirit in me. Yeah. Mm. Two kinds of people go to church. The calculated are those who will not leave until something has touched us. The group who continues to pray, it doesn't matter if I was the last one in the church. In Baton Rouge, Louisiana, we started a church there for the deaf, and we had one young lady I would drive and pick up in the van and bring to church. Well, she always went to the Catholic church first, and then I would go and pick her up and bring her to our church service. And I'd go at night, Sunday night, pick her up and bring her to church service. And I remember Sally, always at the end of the church service on Sunday night, we had altar time to come and pray. Sally came and knelt and began to pray and would speak in tongues continually. And we would be the last ones there every Sunday night. We would lock the doors because she sought God without worrying about the time, without worrying about Eating, mm. that is a calculated 
determined group. This woman planned it. <clears throat> the approach. We need to have a calculated approach to church. We need to have a calculated plan to give in the offering. We need to have a calculated plan to worship. If we determine in your hearts and your minds that no matter what happens, I'm going forward and I'm worshiping my God, I'm giving my best. I'm going to the altar, I'm crying, I'm praying. I'm determining that I am going to church. I, I'm determining I am going to touch the heart of God with my reach. <clears throat> Allowing nothing to stop me. I want to touch God. Charles Finney said, God, he prayed this. He said, God, I come to you with your faithful promises in my hand, and I cannot be denied. God, I come to you with your faithful promises. Yeah. It, it's full of them. Promises. And I will not be denied by you. Prayer is the resolve we need. We need to be determined to see the kingdom of God in this city. Hey, I might stumble, but resolve gets me back up. And I may blow it a thousand times, but resolve does not give up. It continues until I have received from Him. Pressing in to receive the kingdom is, is uh, making the right choices. Making the choice to fight for God. Resolve means, uh, well, you know, our fifth year anniversary as a church here is coming up when? We merged together in August, five years ago. Time flies. We gave out a paper and you wrote on it what our expectations were for August after five years, or at, at five years. And we said well, there'd be a church full of people here, 250, 300, whatever. I don't see 300 or 200 people here today. I see about 50, 60 people here. But let me tell you something. Resolve does not give up. Because I know what God has said. Just because I had a vision and I saw it clearly, but it's not happening. Hey, I'm still pressing through until I see it. Uh, I need to close. We need to develop a uh, rhythm. I was never good at this. Uh, what is rhythm? This is your heartbeat. Uh, you went too fast, but that's okay. Leave it there. Uh, your heartbeat. You know, if you have a heartbeat that goes, 
something's wrong with you. Your heartbeat has to be steady. Mine's beating pretty fast right now. You need to develop a heartbeat for God. A, a rhythm for God. Um, we need to develop a weekly resolve. I'm coming to church to worship God. And when the singing starts, I'm going to worship Him with every part of my body. Next Sunday, you'll see me dancing here. Okay, well, I'll let Ashley do the dancing. But I'm coming with expectations. I will get something from God. I'm expecting God to do it. I prayed... Uh, yesterday, uh, I was sitting back there uh, during, during worship practice, and the Lord spoke to me, and man, I, I can't even remember what the Lord said. Let me look it up. Oh, he said, don't stop. Keep going. Don't stop. Keep going. That's all. It's quick, but it was powerful. Don't stop. Keep going. Too many of us have, well, we hadn't stopped, but we've la, 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 la. Need to develop the rhythm of seeking God. Wrap your arms around me. Wrap your arms around me, God. Come sing it, Bo. We sing this song. Now it's your time to press in. Here at the front, here at your pew. It's time to say, here I am. Resolve. Thank you. 